Hey guys, what's up? It's Spamedia here once again. And I was talking to a guy on Reddit the other day, and he explained to me how a lot of people who watch anime today only really watch the stuff that's came out post-2010. So I thought I'd give a little recap on my own personal history with the anime fandom, and the bullshit that we all had to deal with as an OG anime fan. And I've been around since like the original big trilogy of like Inuyasha, Dragon Ball Z and Yu Yu Hakusho. I stayed through it for like the mid-2000 boom with shows like Fully Cowley, Cowboy Bebop and Gant, and I've really watched this fandom turn into something fantastic. But it hasn't been easy guys. <laughs> Let me explain. See, back in the 90s, at least for the UK, anime was pretty much whatever you could get on the television. A lot of the broadcasting channels had the distribution rights for the DVDs, which was never a good thing. If you've ever looked for like original releases of your favourite cartoons as a kid, or even your favourite animes, you'll often find that there was episodes left out, it would be released out of order, and when you're watching like a chronological show like most of animes are, it's not great. This was particularly bad from Fox Kids, I mean, Jetix, I mean, Disney XD. Um, what's going on with that by the way? Because it's a total piss take how many times that channel's changed its name. But if you were to diverge from like the mainstream media's idea of what anime should be, you were going to get a lot of shit. Now there was a lot of great shows back then that weren't televised like uh, Ninja Scroll and Akira, but I shit you not, picking up a DVD that wasn't shown on TV was a complete gamble. Some places actually released pornography with the porn cut out as an original anime release. And it wasn't so easy to find out which was which because the internet wasn't a massive thing back then. So trying to explain to your grandmother why you want a VHS release of Dragon Ball Z a week after she's went and bought you Mission to Darkness where you've sat with her for five minutes only for a tentacle monster to be shot out of the penis shaped spaceship because two people were fucking on the release a fucking monster button is a really hard task. She's not really fond of that idea. But this kind of grew the initial stigma of what anime was, ultra-violent and sexualized, but it also affected the opinion of people who watched it. But that was the early days in the 90s. Throughout the early 2000s, things would pick up. The actual interest in anime increased, at least in the US with Adult Swim, in the UK with Toonami with its two-hour block. And because of that, the general public changed their view of anime anyway. Some people actually started to respect it as a medium for entertainment. The stigma that the media would try and portray actually started to decrease. This is also when people started to fully call it anime because I shit you not, before the 2000s, some people called it Japanimation. And I think that's extremely racist and beautiful and hysterical all in the same time. But by the mid 2000s, it had an explosion in popularity. With introduction to video sharing sites like YouTube, the Western audience became a powerhouse in what influenced anime as a whole. It became so significant that shows like The Big O would get a second season that was never intended to be made outside of Japan. And this is where anime as we know it today started to really form its identity. We started to see DVD only releases from places like Funimation, but there was a problem growing with that idea. You see, DVDs for these kind of shows had become extremely expensive and there was no control over price and people had no understanding of what they were really buying when they bought that DVD. For example, Fully Cooley, which was a six episode show, got three separate DVD boxes, two episodes on each. We were expected to pay £20, about 30 USD at the time, to own just two episodes? which was ridiculous. You would spend $90, £60 on six episodes of a TV programme. It wasn't much better for other shows like Gantz, you would get a complete box set, but it was about the same price as the three boxes of Fully Cooley. Some shows had the same rules apply to four episodes a disc releases. So some shows could actually end up costing you £120. I don't even care what that is in USD. For 24 episodes? Unheard of. And if you thought continuous shows were safe, were they fucked? You see, the continuous shows were owned by the broadcasting companies like Nickelodeon, Jetix, Cartoon Network, and they were really bad for releasing collections. This happened to Cardcaptor Sakura, where you would be lucky to get like the best five episodes in a movie on a DVD release and nothing else. And shows like Shaman King? Forget about it, you got the first five episodes of a continuous storyline and they never released another DVD. So with the high prices, the lack of confidence in the products that you were buying, and the fact that you could access these shows for free, this really throttled the release of dubbed anime and DVD releases. 
releases and this wasn't really fixed until recently really the past five years with accessibility from websites like Amazon and later Crunchyroll thankfully today we can actually access our favourite shows with a click of a button or a walk down the street it might not be perfect it might even be a bit more expensive but it was nothing on what we suffered I mean I have my fair share of accidental porn stories if you want me to share them just ask me in the comments did you ever get an accidental porn or did you have to suffer through any of this let me know guys i'm feeling lonely <laughs> but leave a comment down below give me a like and subscribe if you like the video and i'll see you guys next time